Thank you, Lord. Well, did you find Mark? We began talking about on a series called Miracles Now. And, and y'all were excited. <laughs> did you remember or not? You look like you forgot. No, man. Oh, you were excited. Woo. You were, you were just bubbling, <laughs> excited. Maybe you'll remember here in a few minutes. Uh, Mark 16. <laughs> you said you're believing with me, right? For utterance, you're believing with me. Mark 16, verse 15. Jesus said to them, Go. Go. <laughs> Go ye into all the world and preach. Go and preach. Glory to God. I feel like I've been doing some of that. Go and preach the good news. Not a bunch of junk. Good news. Preach good news. To every creature. You know, faith is positive. Unbelief is negative. We're not supposed to be negative. And, and one reason that a lot of people are staying away from church is because, uh, and, and think they don't want to be a Christian, is because they have relatives and family and friends that are. And, and they think, well, man, if being a Christian is being like them, then no thank you. Because really they are the most negative souls. They're just negative and it's always anti this and anti that and can't do this and can't do that. It's never about what you can do. It's always negative, negative, negative. Lord, deliver us from these negative folks. <laughs> Faith is positive. Do you believe this or not? We're not supposed to go preach bad news. I mean, for whole generations, it seemed like most of the church just preach, you're going to hell. You're going to hell, you bunch of sinners. You evil bunch of wicked sinners. You're going to hell. Well, that's not good news. Is it? That is, that's bad news. Did the Lord tell us to go into all the world and give people bad news? No. no, he didn't. No. Give people good news. Give them the good news. The good news is God's not against you. He's not mad at you because of your sins. Because he put all your sins on Jesus. And Jesus paid the price. He's already paid the price for all the sins you've ever done and all you ever will do. And he's raised him from the dead free from them. Free from all those sins. And all you got to do is believe on him and receive him and follow him and you'll be accepted and forgiven and cleansed. Name in the Lamb's book of life, saved forever, future in heaven with him. That's good news. I said, that's good news. They said, well, what, what if people don't want, they don't like that. They don't, they said, well, I don't believe all that. Well, now you got bad news for them. <laughs> You're going to hell <laughs> if you don't change. But give them the good news first. And then if they receive it, you don't have to give them any bad news. But some folks, all they do is they give the bad news First and only, that's all they ever give, is the bad news. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to everybody, the good news. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not will be damned. These signs will follow them that believe. And he talks about uh, casting out demons and speaking in new tongues, and laying hands on people and then being healed. Verse 19 after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God and they went forth and preached, proclaimed this good news everywhere and the Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. Signs following. So we begin talking about miracles 
and signs and wonders and miracles now. The Bible tells us about in the last days there would be a group of people who would have a form of godliness, but they would deny the power of godliness, the power thereof. And so there's a lot of folks that don't believe in miracles and scoff at it and make fun of it and think it's strange that folks like us have a miracle and healing night or that we talk about that we do speak in other tongues. And we believe in the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. We believe in gifts of healings, and word of uh, knowledge, and word of wisdom, and prophecy. We believe in signs and wonders. We believe that they actually literally happened as recorded in this holy book. And we believe they are continuing to happen in this day and time. Miracles now. Now, there's a, a lot of people that have trouble with this, and uh, they, uh, they've decided that, you know, that's, uh, if you can't prove it with a scientific theory or explanation, then uh, it's just fantasy or it's just uh, myth. And so it's, it, it's disturbing to see how many church going people. Or if they're not just saying that didn't literally happen, they're allowing, well, you know, is it really that important to say that uh, uh, Jonah was swallowed by a great fish, whale, whatever, animal of some type? Uh, or is the most important thing the lesson, you know, that it teaches? And uh, about, you know, these miracles, are they more symbolic uh, what, what do the, no, 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 no. This is denying the power thereof and you're denying God. And you're calling the Bible error and lies. No, this is not myth. I said, this is not myth. And if it says it happened, it's not symbolic. It's not figurative. It happened. And you see people scoff, scoffing and, and blaspheming and saying, oh, the very idea that God created the heavens and the earth, you know, in X amount of days, everybody knows that it took millions of years to do this or do that. No. Do they now? Yeah. <laughs> Who's everybody? Everybody. And how do they know? No, friend, you're talking about uh, evolution, for instance, is a belief. Are you with me, friends? It's a belief. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that the, the theory is wrong. What do you mean? Well, the theory is basically that a species can involve, evolve into a different species. That has never happened. That's right. And it never will. That's right. Now, God has created animals and plants, and ourselves included, with an amazing adaptability. But a, a, a fish has never become a bird. And uh, an ape has never become a man. And never has, never will. How do you know that, Brother Keith? Because the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 15, among other things, that there's one kind of flesh of this kind, talking about birds or fish, and another kind of this. God has created everything after its specific order. It was created that way. It cannot turn into a different species. So all of that is a belief. <laughs> well, y'all okay with this or not? It's a belief. Well, we just believe that the cosmos just began, basically created itself. And that we evolved basically from the goo to the zoo to you. <laughs> You 
you were swimming and then you just decided you'd get up and walk on land or swing in the tree. Then you decided you'd just jump down and lose your tail. And it is, it is an unproven theory. It is a belief. People say, well, y'all just believe that. Well, that's what you believe. It's an unproven theory. It's a belief that that's what happened. But come on now. The Bible said in Romans that even God's eternal power and Godhead are clearly seen by the things that are made. Come on if you got any smarts and you peer out over the vast Pacific and you look out over the majestic Rockies. If you look out into space and see the sun, the stars, the moon, the solar systems, you're going to tell me that all this just happened. That's somebody who doesn't want to believe in God, who chooses not to. And so they have chosen another belief. But this perfection came out of nothing. That's like taking a bunch of plastic explosives, setting them off in the salvage yard, and when the dust clears, there's a brand new Cadillac sitting there. <laughs> I don't care how many times you set off the explosives, you're never going to wind up with a new car. That's right. Never. No. Well, if you did it, billions of billions. No, no, no. You just have more junk blowed up. <laughs> You're never, it takes intelligent yes. design. Yes. Hmm? If you're a Christian, you believe in the great father of spirits, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and the God and father of our Lord Jesus, the savior of all mankind. He is and always has been and will always be the miracle working God. Amen. Somebody say miracle working. Miracle. Now that word miracle, I, I think we almost have a wrong connotation about it. Basically, if you look up the words, it means power. It has to do with the demonstration of God's power. To God, uh, you know, it's not strange Miracles is just another day of operation. <laughs> you might know what I'm talking about. But when we hear the word miracle, people think, oh, that's, that's strange. Oh, that's going to take a, mm, my, my, my miracle. <laughs> but we ought to shout when we hear that because we know the one with whom miracles is normal operation. And he does signs and wonders. Somebody say miracles, miracles. Signs. signs, wonders. wonders. Thank you, Lord. We looked in the book of Acts at some marvelous demonstrations of God's power. One of the most amazing is the resurrection of Jesus, how that he was raised from the dead. Was he really dead? Absolutely. His body was dead for days. His spirit wasn't there in that tomb. And the power of God, the Bible said he was raised up by the glory of the Father. Does he still have his glory? Yes. That glory came in that tomb. Mm. That dark, damp tomb that was full of death. The glory of God came into that place and Jesus entered that body and that body was changed. Hallelujah. The glory moved over it. The, the same spirit that hovered over the face of the deep in the beginning. He, he moved over it and his body was changed from mortal to immortal. Amen. From corruptible to incorruptible. And the Bible tells us one of these days soon our body is going to be made just like his glorious body. Oh! Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. No more wear and tear and aging and, and weakness or any deformities or malfunctions. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
We, we, just, we just don't know what it's going to be like. But it's going to be amazing. Yes. Amazing. Yes. You'll finally have a body that can keep up with your born again spirit. Yes. Now what that means I don't know, but I'm looking forward to finding out. <laughs> it will be glorious. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. But Jesus was raised up from the dead by this glory. This is a miracle. And it is a sign. And it is a wonder. A wonder is something that has you in awe. You're in awe and you, you're in wonder and awe about it. You, you don't understand it. You're amazed. And our, our God, if he's able to create the heavens and the earth and you and me, certainly he could do things that would wow us. And amaze us. And the question is, do you believe it? And will you just accept what you can't understand? Hmm? Because there are a lot of people that don't. A lot of people that won't. People that attribute his power to even the enemy. All oh, that speaking in tongues, that's of the devil. All that healing stuff. Oh, I wouldn't go to one of them healing meetings. Oh, I wouldn't let one of them guys pray for me. Don't you know that's the devil? Come on now. The devil is healing God's people. <laughs> so that they can feel good and do the work of Jesus. Doesn't sound right to me. He is the, the thief. The killer. The destroyer. No, Jesus is the healer. Anybody getting healed, you ought to just shout. Right? Yes. Healing is good. Being set free, being delivered is good. Jesus was raised up. That's a miracle. Do you believe he was really dead? Do you believe he's really raised to life again and that he's alive right now? He's got a, a glorified body that you could touch and feel just like this at the right hand of majesty on high right now. And he's your Lord and he's your brother. You know people. <laughs> <laughs> in very high places. <laughs> say, say, I know people. <laughs> uh, we saw that he ascended before their eyes. We saw the Holy Ghost fall and, and them speak in tongues on the day of Pentecost. Do you believe that happened just like that? We saw, we looked last time at about how the Spirit of God came through the place where they were meeting and shook the building. Do you believe that really happened? Yes. They weren't just all having a, a mental episode. The building actually shook. Huh? Do you believe it? Yes. How did that happen? Well, I don't know. The Bible said the Holy Ghost came on them and filled them. He was involved in it. How did he shake the building without tearing it down? I don't know. He's God. But I can believe what I don't understand. And I believe that God is a miracle working God. And I believe that he is still doing these kinds of things today. I believe he could shake the church at Branson if he wanted to. Suit me real good. The Lord, shake this place. Come in like a rushing mighty wind. Hmm? Now, uh, It'd be different than you think. We, we like to go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, it'd be different. I've tasted just a little bit of it. And, and it's different. You still got your flesh. And your flesh wants to go, oh, oh, oh. This is, oh. The supernatural is foreign to your flesh. And if you haven't experienced anything like this, it, it will get your attention. And your mind will just buzz. And what you have to do is come back and say, no, hold on, hold on. It's him. Don't get scared. It's him. And the supernatural power of God will be manifest to those that believe. Now those that scoff and those that are skeptical and those who 
have to overanalyze everything and subject. If they can't understand it and figure it out, then they can't accept it. Well, it won't happen for those people. They're unbelievers. But these signs will follow who? Who? Those that believe. Are you a believer? Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Now, we don't just want supernatural happenings because there are some supernatural happenings that are not God. We're not just hungry for the supernatural. We're hungry for God. But He is Spirit, and He does amazing and miraculous things. And we need to not be shocked and scared when He does. Notice I didn't say if. When he does. When he does. Go to Acts 5. Let's look at some more miracles. Some more miracles. <clears throat> we saw Jesus was raised from the dead and he ascended on high and we saw them speak with tongues. The Holy Ghost come down and wind like, like a strong mighty wind and flame of fire, shaking buildings. Is this a, uh, the same church we're a part of? Yes. Huh? Yes. Then why should we be so dead? <laughs> Are we really a part of the same church as this bunch in the book of Acts? Yes. Did they experience some amazing things? Yes. Did they? Yes. They did. Man, the, the, the spiritual was real to them. Go, go through the book of Acts and read it carefully again. And, and look everywhere that it says anything about the Holy Spirit or moving of the Spirit. I mean, they, he was so real to them. The Spirit said this, and the Spirit said that, and the Spirit did this, and the Spirit forbade them from doing this, and wouldn't allow this, and the Spirit said, and the Spirit moved. I mean, He was real to them yes, in their services, in their churches, in their daily life and walk. The term Spirit-filled has been used far too loosely. People say a word or two in tongues, and they say, well, they're Spirit-filled. No, there's one initial filling, but there are to be many following refillings. And just because you were full of the Spirit 20 years ago is no indication you are today. And we're talking about an awareness of this person of God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. And He is Spirit. Somebody say spirit. 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 Do you believe that spirit things are real? Yes. Or are you limited to only believing in a natural world that you can see and feel and touch? If you only believe in the natural world, then do you believe that when you die or anybody else dies, that's the end? The body dies, the mind flickers out, and that's it. It's over. Or do you believe the Bible? Yes. That God is spirit. Yes. And he's the father of spirits. And you're not just mind and body. You're a spirit. You have a mind. You live in a body. And when this body dies, that's not the end of you. You step out of that body. Hallelujah. And you are an eternal spirit. Child of God. And you'll live with him and commune with him forever. Well, we don't have to wait to leave this body to become more aware of spiritual things. Jesus was very aware of spiritual things, wasn't he? He dealt with spiritual things as he walked in this flesh. Paul, Peter, others in the book of Acts did too. We can too. We can live a carnal life and a mental life where all we're aware of is our logic and reasoning and our sensory perception. Or we can become spiritual people and be aware of God who is spirit 
and be aware of human spirits and, and wrong spirits. And I'm not talking about you're having to see visions and see things all the time, but you can have experiences. The gifts of the Spirit are spiritual manifestations, not natural. You know, I've, you hear sometimes people trying to explain them that don't believe in the supernatural. And so, well, you know, gifts of healings, that's the doctor's. God gave us doctors. Well, He did give us doctors, but that's not gifts of healings. Right. And, and speaking in tongues, well, that's people that are, uh, have linguistic ability and can learn multiple languages. No, no, no. So they're trying to make the, the, the supernatural natural because they, they, they don't, they're not aware of and, and don't believe in it. But we don't deny the power thereof. We believe in the reality of the spiritual. Amen. And you don't have to be afraid of it when the greater one is in you. The greatest spirit of all is in you. Can you say amen? amen? We'll never walk in the power and victory and results that we're supposed to have until we walk a spiritual walk, a spiritual life. And spiritual doesn't mean that you're, you get weird. People have... Uh, They've gotten off in these areas. Some of the most spiritual people I've ever had the privilege of meeting are some of the most down-to-earth folks that you'll ever want to be around. In fact, if you don't know, you wouldn't think they're all that spiritual because they just they seem natural. But what it is is reality. Some folks calling things spiritual are living in fantasy world. And they think, be, they think everybody else is as clueless about spiritual things as they are, so they can just make up anything and people can go, yeah, whoo, that must be it. <laughs> but no, there is the real. And there are a few people that know something about it. Would you like to be one of them? Yes. Well, you can be. But you have to quit playing games and quit pretending. And these things, they're either there or they're not. It's not figments of your imagination. Word of knowledge, you either have it or you don't. Yes. You know, word of wisdom. I mean, you, you don't just drum it up. You don't just work it up. You don't just work yourself into a frenzy and imagine something. <laughs> Spirit things are real. They're not imaginary. They're real. And what we're doing right now is a part of it. This word concerning this faith comes by hearing, doesn't it? And meditating on these wonders and on these miracles and on these signs, there is the supply and quantity of that in this word can get in our spirits. I said it can get in our spirits and we can receive it and allow it to take us up to another level of living and operating on a spiritual plane, not just a natural and mental. Are you willing to have a supernatural life, a spiritual life, to be alert and aware of things that most people are not. Acts 5, did you find that? Here's the next miracle <laughs> that we can read about. Verse 1, a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back. Somebody say kept back. Yeah. Was that a bad idea? Yes. Kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own power? In other words, he's saying, nobody told you you had to sell your land. That's right. And nobody told you you had to give it all. I mean, you could give any part you want. None, half. Nobody told you what you had to do. And, and when people are really operating in the spirit, there is no dictation of what you have to give and what you have to do. Did you hear? I've heard some people, you know, they, uh, uh, 
They want to form committees to go around to people's house and collect their tithes if they didn't give them. <laughs> that is happening in some places. And, and, and you know, well, where's your offering? And no, if it's not from the heart and willing, it's not acceptable Amen. to the Lord. And then you just see, you see no precedent for that kind of thing in the scriptures. Uh, thank, we have the Holy Spirit to lead us today. And, uh, you, you know, you not, don't need to be telling somebody else what they should do. Well, they're not following the Lord. Well, if they're not, that's between them and Him. Right. You leave them alone. Amen. Right? Yes. They'll be the one to, to miss it. But uh, the Lord is not a coercer. Notice, He is the good shepherd, Amen. not the good cowboy. <laughs> do you know why I say that? Yes. Cowboy drives the herd. Shepherd does what? Leads the herd and the sheep follow of their own volition. Nobody's driving them. Big, big difference. <laughs> so uh, he said, uh, while it remained, it was yours. It was your own after it was sold. It was totally in your power. Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You've not lied to men, but unto God. One of the most devilish things you could ever do is tell a lie. It's sad that uh, it is a, an acceptable thing. Most everybody knows it's not good, it's not right, but pretty much people concede, well, we all lie sometimes. You don't have to lie. Now, it'd be hard to find in the room somebody that had never lied. But just because you have doesn't mean you have to in the future. You can, you can begin to see things the way God sees them. And I'm telling you, He hates it. He hates any form of deception and lying. You know the rest of the story. Judgment came swift, didn't it? This is the New Testament church. It's the same church we're a part of. This is after the beginning days of the church. And, and Ananias fell dead right here on the spot. And then his wife, why, why so swift? Why so, so uh, serious? I mean, you know, couldn't they have just been chastised for a while? Uh, I mean, a lot of people have done a lot of dumb stuff and didn't just fall dead being judged. Why is this so serious? Well, these people were honoring God with their substance. They were sacrificing. They were selling houses and buildings and lands and bringing it and putting it into the gospel. And it was a pure and a holy thing to the Lord. And these guys got up and mocked it. In the middle of this move of God, they mocked it, made a mockery, acted, pretended like they're doing it. So that people would notice them and make a big deal. But they loved the money so much that they didn't want to depart with all that. So they, they lied. Friends, I, I know you, if you've been around, you've heard me say it enough. Maybe you think that's my soapbox. But listen, God is truth. Jesus is truth. The Word of God is truth. Hate lies. Hate deception. And refuse to be a part of it. There are miracles in the area of healing. There are miracles in the area of deliverance and protection. But there are also miracles in the area of judgment. Not just used to be. This is New Testament. Yes, right. Isn't it? There are miracles and signs and wonders in the area of judgment. Now that's what happened to Egypt. Do you remember that? Hold your place here. Go back to the book of Psalms. Psalm 105. Let's see. Let's begin about verse uh, 26 or so here. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen and they showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. And he begins to enumerate the signs that they showed. What's the next sign? He sent darkness and made it dark. That was a sign and a wonder. Verse 29, turned the waters into blood, slew their fish. That was a sign 
and a wonder. The land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of the kings. You know, what's humorous to me is, is when Moses asked the Pharaoh when he wanted the frogs to leave, he said, tomorrow. <laughs> One more night with the frogs. <laughs> That'll preach, won't it? <laughs> but it was a, it was a sign. <laughs> I guess you can get used to anything. <laughs> uh, he spake and there came divers sorts of flies and lice, hail, flaming fire. These were uh, lightning bolts. Lightning bolts took out masses of their livestock because they didn't, they didn't uh, believe the word enough to put them up. The Bible said there's some of the Egyptians by that time feared the Lord. And so when the Lord said, when through Moses said that was going to happen, they went and got all their cows and sheep and put them up. And theirs were spared. But the ones that didn't believe the word of the Lord and left theirs out, they were killed with the, uh, the hail and the lightning. This was a, uh, a wonder. Their vines, their fig trees their, uh, were broken. Locusts came, caterpillars, uh, the firstborn. That was a sign, wasn't it? Those were signs of judgment and wonders of judgment. I know we like, we, when we think of sign, miracles and wonders, we usually think of healings. We think of deliverances. But that's just one area of the signs and wonders of God. He is an awesome God. He is the righteous judge of all the earth. And his power, his ability, we just have no, no measure of understanding. Anybody that can create stars and solar systems, and he, he certainly can shake the planet. That's right. Right? And he did, he, Egypt was the strongest nation in the world, and they worshiped everything. They worshiped the sun as God, and they had all kind of other gods. And, and uh, the Lord showed himself strong over everything they worshiped. Yes, they worshiped the sun, so he made it dark. Yes. <laughs> they worshiped the Nile, so he made it into blood where you couldn't even drink it. Everything they worshiped. He showed himself superior and untouchable. And some of Pharaoh's sorcerers and magicians tried to stand toe to toe with uh, God's man and what was, what was being spoken through his prophet. And they seemed to do it for a little while. But then after a while, they had sores on them. And problems, and they came to Pharaoh and said, "Man, this is God. You need, you need to, you need to listen to this guy. And we're not going to, uh, we're not going to go toe to toe with him anymore." So they they went and hid. <laughs> Come on, think about it. When when the man of God said, "Tomorrow, it's going to be dark everywhere in Egypt," but in the land of Goshen. Sun will be shining bright. Now that's some weather report. <laughs> that's like saying clear skies and sunny in Missouri. Pitch black in Arkansas. Because <laughs> that's all it was, was a boundary line. Just like a state line. Now imagine driving to the state line. <laughs> and the sun just brilliant over here and it's pitch dark over there. What would that do to your mind? Would that make an eerie feeling come over you? <laughs> Think that'd make the news? Did it actually happen? It happened. It happened just that way. And all those plagues and all those locusts and flies and frogs, they were, I mean, they were in the cooking pots in Pharaoh's kitchen. In his oven, in his bed. He went to go to bed, frogs in the bed. Frogs everywhere. But in the land of Goshen, no frogs. 
frog free. <laughs> Come on, this is good news, friend. This is what the 91st Psalm is talking about. Even when the pestilence comes through and the plague and destruction it will not come near my dwelling. It won't touch me. Come on, is it true? I don't care if it was chemical warfare. I don't care if it was some kind of a plague sweeping through the land. It can run up against the power of God when it gets to your place and your house. Just like they put the blood on the doorpost and lintel and the destroyer could not come into that house. He had to pass over and keep going. That's where Passover came from. Had to pass over them. And if we'll believe God and trust God, destruction and accidents and tragedy and crimes will have to pass over us and not touch us. Do you believe your miracle working Father God can, has the power to keep you in the midst of the worst that can happen on the planet? Well, you have to believe in miracles to believe that. Another miracle, verse 37, is that he brought them forth with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. This is a, a nation that has been in forced labor for decade after decade now. They've been work and, and recently they've been overworked and not given straw and demanded to meet their quotas, and the Bible tells us that their ma taskmasters were beating them. So when you're pushed till you drop and you're beaten and you have to live in abject poverty, you don't own the rags on your back, what kind of health are you going to be in? And you, you tell me that, I, I mean, there were 600 some thousand foot soldiers plus the men, women, and children. There are millions of people came out of there and the Bible says when he, when he brought them out, there wasn't one feeble person among all their tribe. I submit to you, something supernatural happened. Because they were a broken slave people. And God brought them up, healed their bodies, glory to God, quickened them, and put money in their pocket. Didn't he? How many know if you're healed and healthy and got plenty of money? You ready to go? You ready? You ready now to go do what the Lord told you to do? Because sickness is bondage. Poverty is bondage. If you're sick enough, it doesn't make any difference what kind of call you got on your life. You're not able to go. And even if you got good health, if you're broke enough, I don't care what kind of vision or call you got, you can't afford to get out of town. Can't leave the house. Oh, but when you're full of health and full of provision, that's what the Lord did for him. He healed him. And he blessed them financially and materially. Somebody say, glory to, glory to God. It goes on talking about miracles, the cloud for a covering, the fire in the night. I mean, you could see that fire burning in the cloud. It was always there. You could look out your tent and there it was, just burning. It's not a figment of somebody's imagination. It's there. And he brought in quail and opened the rock and waters gushed out. They, now, now the, not, not, not a few ounces. They ran in the dry places like a river. So you hear some foolish people try and explain. Well, yeah, you know, if you dig around under a rock, you can get a little moisture in the sand. Rivers. Let's see you tap a rock and rivers come out. <laughs> Come on, say miracles. Miracles? I believe in miracles. You believe in miracles? Miracles. But I just wanted you to see that that's, that's what the Lord was doing then. These were signs, uh, wonders and signs of judgment. And they showed his power and they showed his righteousness. And it was for the benefit of his people. I mean, the judgment wasn't on his people. It was against the enemies of his people. Is, isn't that right? 
in the land of Goshen, there was sunshine and there was protection. And, and the destroyer had to pass over. But all the brunt of this judgment was coming on the people that denounced God and refused to believe in Him and where the enemies were oppressing and hurting God's people. Now go with me back to Acts, the book of Acts, New Testament. We know Sapphira came in. And they asked her about the price of the land and she said the same thing. They had agreed together. And he said, uh, how is it that you've agreed to do this thing? And uh, again, they've not lied to men, but they lied to God. And he said, the uh, um, feet of the ones that buried your husband coming in, they were just getting back in from burying her husband. I guess they didn't even tell her that he was dead. And he's already buried. She don't even know it. Now this tells you something about the atmosphere. Peter and the other guys, uh, the leaders said, uh, Take him out and bury him right now. They didn't say, well, what about state regulations? What about, what about giving his family? No, a man just fell dead because uh, of running his mouth and, and lying to the Holy Ghost. Oh, the other people didn't feel so frisky to <laughs> offer their dumb opinions or to show, show indications of defiance. And rebel. It is sad that we live in a world where the church has fallen to the place where it is that such defiance and blasphemy is, is permitted and allowed. But I believe the Lord could move in such a way that it would be restored. But judgment must first begin, not in the world, but in the house of God. That's us. That's you and me. Do we want the move of God as we read about in the Acts of the Apostles? <laughs> now if I said that last weekend, you'd just shouted. But now that we're at chapter 5, <laughs> it puts a little different light on. Who wants the move of God like in the book of Acts? That's not everybody at all. <laughs> hmm? Well, who wants to be the first to fall dead? <laughs> For lying. Mocking the things of God. Well, no. But see, it goes hand in hand. But when judgment occurs at the house of God, it opens up something to happen in civil affairs, including the highest offices, including the governments of nations. You're there in Acts 5, just going over to the 12th chapter. Well, I'm moving, I'm moving too quick. In Acts 5, notice this, as you go on your way, uh, Acts 5, Ananias, verse 5, he heard these words, he fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. This, this actually, I didn't plan it this way, but the Lord's just very smart, isn't he? Uh, dovetails with our teaching on uh, honor. Because the fear of the Lord, Amen. the reverence, the honor of the Lord. When this happened, what, what did it say? Great fear and reverence of, the, of God came on everybody that heard. People heard, man, did you hear? Ananias and Sapphira fell dead at the service last night. Oh. And there wasn't this scoffing and mocking and carrying on. There was a reverence. Are we lacking in this? Today. Yes, we are sadly lacking in this. Should this be restored? Yes. That when the Lord is talked about and his things are talked about, there's not a bunch of uh, harrowing and, and, and joking and off color and disrespect that, that people ought to realize God is real. Yes. And if you, if you care about your situation, you'll watch your mouth. 
Because, see, the thought came to them, man, Ananias and Sapphira, I knew them. <laughs> They're dead, dead and buried. <laughs> they buried him before his wife got to the service. <laughs> and they buried her immediately after. And the Bible said great fear, a, a reverence, a, a holy fear came on not, not just the people in the church, but people outside the church. And if the church was building on and they were buying some timber and lumber and, and the guy wasn't a believer and thought about cheating the church, his partner would say, hey, hey, remember Ananias <laughs> and Sapphira, you sure you want to do that? <laughs> there was a reverence throughout the whole community. Should we have this again, saints? Yes, yes we should. And it, uh, after three hours, his wife came in not knowing what was done. Three hours. Service is still going. Hmm? <laughs> and Peter said, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yeah, that's right. Th that's the exact amount. Should she have been afraid to lie to the man of God. Yes. Why wasn't she, now somebody said, you, you mean respectful? No, I mean afraid. Yes. Afraid, afraid. Yes. Scared, afraid. Yes. There's some things you ought to be scared of. Yes. This is one of them. Why wasn't she afraid? Because she didn't believe in God. She didn't believe he was real enough. She believed this is just you know, that, that she could say and do this stuff and he could, her and, and her husband could say it and nobody would know. What do you mean nobody would know? But see, people act like God's not real. They act like he's not there. Like he doesn't know, like he doesn't see. And even these guys, in the midst of a move of God, came up there and acted like God wasn't real. Act like he wouldn't know and they wouldn't know if they just lied and made up stuff. But boy, were they wrong. Huh? They found out too late in the hard way that God was very, very real, didn't they? And it, it must have been necessary we see verse 11 great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things and by the hands of the apostles were many somebody say many Many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, there's no man join himself to them, but the people magnify the unbelievers. Nobody was playing church. Let me say it like that. <laughs> Nobody wanted to come play church. You either got in <laughs> or you weren't in, but even if you weren't in, you showed respect. Would you like to see this? In our, in our cities, in our, in our state, in our nation, would you like to see this? Yes. Could the Lord do some things? Yes. We're part of the same church, same Holy Spirit, same God, same gospel, same name of Jesus. But I want you to see what this opened the door for. Judgment must first begin at the house of God. Well, it did. It did. And the fear of God came and the presence of God was so holy and strong and many signs. Somebody say many. Many, many signs. Not, not just two or three. Many signs. And what, why? This, this environment and atmosphere of the reverence and fear and honor of God is the environment that the Spirit of God moves in. He moves. If we're light and frivolous, and we go to church like we're going to a theme park, or a concert, or a movie, then you don't see these kind of, you don't see the move of God, you don't see the signs and wonders. Oh, but when God gets real to us, and He, he begins to manifest Himself, and we, be, we, become, we begin to become a, a little bit aware of how big He really is, and how awesome He really is. How amazing he really is. You can sense it in the atmosphere of the service. You can sense it 
in the people's homes. You can sense it in their cars. Not, not a, a dread. If you're walking with him, you've got nothing to be scared of. He's your protector. Should you be scared to get in his face and lie? Yeah. Yeah. You should be. But I don't know about you. I'm not wanting to lie to God. Are you? I'm not wanting to deceive a man or woman of God or, or lie to the Holy Ghost. I'm not wanting to. So as long as I'm wanting to walk with the Lord and please Him, I don't need to be afraid of Him. He's my protection. Hallelujah. He's my blessing. Amen. Now the enemies of God that would hurt us and destroy us, they should be afraid. Yeah. They should be very afraid. <laughs> Can we walk in power like this? Can we experience His presence like this? And notice what it opened the door to. Go to the 12th chapter. About that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. We think we, we got some challenges in our government. <laughs> it ain't this bad. That the head of the government just says, whoever's the, the head of the strongest church, kill him. No trial, no nothing, just take him out and kill him. So they did. They killed him. James. He's a good man. The brother of John killed him with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, they're going to kill Peter too. So they grabbed him, put him in prison. Four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Commanding after Easter, actually that's Passover, to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made. Somebody say, but prayer was made. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now let me remind you about who's praying. You know who's praying? The bunch that they got eyewitnesses of Jesus being raised from the dead in their midst. And people, some of the hundreds that saw him after he was raised from the dead. They, these are, are some that were in the upper room and actually heard the rushing and mighty wind. And saw the flames of fire. Some of these folks were in the places that were shook by the power of God. Right? Do they believe in miracles? Do they believe in the power of God? And what are they praying about? I don't think they're praying little weak, mamby pamby prayers. Oh, Father, if it be thy will. If not, you know we ought to pick out some songs to sing at Peter's funeral. What song did he like? You ever see people talking about something like they're already dead and not even dead yet? What songs did he like? Oh, well, he's, he's not dead yet. Well, yeah, I know, but they already killed James. What's this world coming to? Good man like James. See, negative. Negative. You're not going to see any signs and wonders being negative. They're praying for a miracle. They're pray they don't know what or how, but they're praying for some kind of demonstration of the power of God to save one of their most important leaders. Aren't they? And did they get it? They got it. God sent his angel. Does God have angels? Are there angels here in this room tonight? They are. You don't see them, but they're here. He sent his angel. The angel of the Lord came to him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side. I don't know if he kicked him or shoved him or what he did, but he had to wake him up. He must have not have been too concerned about being executed in the morning. Sleeping like this. Not sleeping lightly. Angel had to, had to kick him or hit him or smote him, it said. And he said, get up quick, get up quick. <laughs> We're having a jailbreak. <laughs> get up. I'm breaking you out of here. <laughs> and he got up, he jumped up, and the chains just fell off. Yeah. Somebody say, the chains, the chains just fell off. Just fell off. I want you to say it again. The chains, the chains 
just fell off. <laughs> he said, get up quick, Peter. And Peter just popped up and the chains just fell off. No keys, no unlocker, no, no sawing. <laughs> no sawing. Huh? No, no trying to wear them down. Or they just fell off. They just fell off. How'd they fall off? How'd they fall off? Miracle working power of God. If he can make natural chains fall off, why couldn't he make other chains just fall off? Chains of bondage, alcohol addiction, drug addiction, pornography addiction, lying, Huh? Any kind of chain. Chain is something that, that holds you. Keeps you from moving. Keeps you from being free. Holds you down. He jumped up. And they just fell off. Do you believe they just fell off? Somebody needs to get happy about they just fell off. They just fell. They just fell off. They just fell off. These are big old honking chains. And they just fell off. They got him shackled. They took the big key and they cranked it and the lock mechanism and it just fell off. No key. Somebody said they just fell off. If those chains can fall off, any kind of chain can just fall off. It can just fall off. The anointing. It destroys the yoke. It removes the burdens. And the angel said, uh, put your clothes on, boy. And you need to put your shoes on, too. He's sleepy. <laughs> come on. Come on, Peter. No, come on, get your shoes. Put your shoes on. Yeah. Tie your belt. <laughs> Come on. We got to go. Come on. So he did. <laughs> he he cast, his garment, cast your garment about you and follow me. Keep up. Come on. And he went out and followed him. So he, he was in a, in a deep sleep. And so he just followed the angel. <laughs> okay. And we know from the rest of it, he thinks he's dreaming. He thinks he's having a, a dream. He's thinking, wow, this is real. This is so vivid. I can feel the, the dampness of the air. And wow, he sure looks real. He just followed him. And he wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and second ward, and they came to the iron gate that leads unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. Now this is long before the days of transistors <laughs> and, and door openers. There's, this is no electric door. There's no electricity. It just went... Opened up. Just opened up. Do you believe it just opened up? Do you believe the gate, iron gate, that leads to the, this is the main gate of the city. Just, the chains just fell off. And the gate just opened up. Of his own accord, by itself. I said, what happened to you? It just went away. <laughs> By itself. <laughs> it just went away. <laughs> what happened to that cancer? It just fell off. <laughs> it just quit. It was just gone. <laughs> Man, I thought you had done that for X amount of years. What happened to you? It just fell off. I just woke up and I was free. 
just didn't desire it anymore. It just fell off. Oh, that's the word of the Lord for somebody tonight. It just fell off. It just opened up. Just fell off. Glory to God, it just opened up of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. I mean, they went a little ways. And Peter just following. He still thinks he's dreaming. He said, wow, this is real. I know that street. Wow, this is real. There's the prison. <laughs> Hang a left. Yes, sir. Hang a He thinks he's dreaming. <laughs> Peter was come to himself. <laughs> well, they went out and passed through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. He, he looked around, and the angel wasn't there. He went, wow, where, hey, where are you? And he looked up, and he knew where he was. And uh, he came to himself and he said, I know of a surety. The Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Hallelujah. And when he considered it, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. That's where they were praying. Hallelujah. He winds up at the door Hallelujah. where prayer was being made. For him. Yes. Somebody say miracle, miracle. Yes. He knocks on the door. <laughs> and they're praying, praying, praying. Who are they praying for? Peter. 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 That's right. Who's at the door? Peter. Peter. Oh God, we need Peter. Oh God, don't let them kill Peter. God, we're standing. We're believing. Whatever you have to do, to, don't let this wicked man take another one of our men of God. God, we're standing for him. We're believing for him. Knock, 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 knock. <laughs> <laughs> and they sit a young, a young woman named Rhoda. Uh, she knew Peter's voice. She, she, she didn't open the door. I guess she just said, who's there? He said, it's me, Peter. She, she recognized his voice. It excited her so much, she didn't open the door. <laughs> but she ran in and told him. And they said, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> they didn't have enough faith in their own prayers. <laughs> Did they? God's answering their prayer, and they're shocked. They're like, ah. But she constantly affirmed that it was so. And they said, well, maybe it's his angel. It's not him. But Peter keeps knock, 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 knock. <laughs> don't you think if you just got broke out of jail, you don't want to be hanging out on the street? <laughs> He's like, come on, guys. Let me in. <laughs> They're in there talking about all this stuff. And he said, come on. <laughs> they opened the door. They saw him. They were astonished. Well, they knew. Word had got back to them. He is in the inner prison. Extra guards assigned to him. Locked down with chains and shackles. He is in the highest level security. Prison. And he got up. And they just fell off. And he walked out and the gate just opened up. Do you believe it happened just like this? Yes. Do you serve the same God today? Yes. Can things in your life that have held you down, can they just fall off? Yes. Can things that have tried to hold you in and keep you out from blessing, can they just open up? Can yes. it just fall off and open up? Glory to, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. But it's not over. The answer to their prayer is not over. Down to verse 20. Well, actually, verse uh, 19, 18. Soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. Where's their prisoner? <laughs> Explain that. And when Herod had sought for them and found him not, he examined the keepers and he commanded that they should be put to death. 
He, he couldn't believe that he just walked out of there. Somebody's on the take. He's, he's not believing in the supernatural. So he put them to death. He went down to Judea, from Judea to Caesarea, and uh, he was displeased with some of the folks of Tyre and Zidon, and they came to try to smooth things over. And on a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, set upon his throne, made an oration to him. And the people gave a shout, and they said, It's the voice of a God and not of a man. And they're just trying to flatter him because they want something from him. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him. He was up there preaching the, the epitome of arrogance. He was eating this up about him being a God. He's killing and trying to kill the most important people in the church, the leaders, the, the, the ones with the strongest anointings. And of course the devil's working through it. And uh, he's up there giving his oration and they're telling him, it's a God, it's a God, he's a God. And he's, he's eating it up. And all at once, oh, something struck him. And he folded. His speech is over. The Bible said, he, because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms, died a horrible death, and gave up the ghost. And don't you reckon the next ruler that took his place thought twice before he starts killing leaders in the church? That's right. But you see, judgment had already taken place in the church. It had begun in the house of God, so it could happen in the civil, in the leaders of the land that defied God and blasphemed and tried to hurt the church. Do we want the move of God as in these days and everything that that means and all that goes with it? I, it bothers me that the church and the holy things of God are minimalized and treated like other religions and marginalized and, and just, you know, people treated like they're fools and, and weaklings that need the crutch of their faith and belief. Our God is a mighty God. Is He a mighty God? And He is able to do things that can shake the foundation of families and businesses and governments and cities and places, isn't he? And even some things that people may not openly talk a lot about, but they know it and it changes them. And they change the way they talk and the way they do. Because even if they won't admit it publicly, they know what happened. I would like to see an increase Amen. in the power of God Hallelujah. in the church yes. and in the world around us. Yes. Amen. Would you? Yes. I would like to see the reverence and fear of God come to a whole nother level Amen. and a whole nother place. No, we don't have to be scared of God that he's going to hurt us if we're serving him. He's our protector. Yes. He's our keeper. Yes. But the blasphemers and enemies of God, they ought to be afraid. There ought to be something, they're aware of something that they should fear. So stand on your feet. We see a number of things, things were in answer to their prayers. They prayed and the people of God were delivered and the enemies of God were judged. Just close your eyes. Let me lead you in a prayer. Hallelujah. Let me pray and then, then I'll lead you in a prayer. Father, I'm so thankful that you've allowed us to understand that you are real. 
We're not playing church. We're not imagining or pretending. You are the God who created the heavens and the earth and gave us life and breath, the ability to think and exist. It's only by your hand and grace that anything is allowed to exist and be sustained. Our hearts yearn that you be honored and glorified like you ought to be. We pray, Lord. Say it out loud. Lord, we pray. That your hand would move. Your spirit would manifest. In such a way that you'd be seen. Not man, but you. The reality of you would be manifest. And your reverence would be restored in the church and those outside the church. We seek your glory. We say get glory to yourself in these days like the days of Acts. You're the same God. We're a part of the same church. Same Holy Spirit. Let your power be great. Stretch forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders of all kinds according to your will and your plan may be done may be worked to the glory of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you Lord. Just worship Him. Just lift up your hands. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we exalt you, we glorify you. We magnify your holy and righteous and wonderful name. Get glory to yourself. Get glory to yourself. Get glory to yourself. Get glory to yourself. Hallelujah.